No, you may not know this, but the president loves me. He really does. He loves watching me on TV. He loves the stuff I say. He loves me. And so, since he loves me, I want to help the president. And so here's what I want to do. I want to talk to you, Mr. President. I want to let you know, you've been living inside 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue for the last four years. If you don't think you can change Washington from inside the White House, then let's give you the plane ticket back to Chicago. You've earned I mean, that's a scary thing for the President of the United States to say, isn't it? You can't change Washington from the inside. Really? You can't change Washington from the inside. It shows his arrogance. See, because if he really believes that, if he believes that, then what the hell is he doing asking for another four years? You can't change Washington, D.C. from the inside? That's fine. We're happy to give you a bus ticket to the outside, Mr. President. And the worst part of that is, when he says that, it shows even more about his arrogance. See, because what he's saying is, it's not my fault. See, it's not my responsibility. It's not my fault. It's George W. Bush's fault, right? It's Dick Cheney's fault. It's Big Oil's fault. It's the coal company's fault. It's the gas company's fault. It's the fault of the Republicans in Congress. It's John Boehner's fault. It's Eric Cantor's fault. It's Kevin McCarthy's fault. It's Mitch McConnell's fault. For God's sake, it's anybody's fault but mine. That's what he's saying to us. And no, he says, please, just give me another four years. I'll figure it out. Well, you know what, Mr. President? I'm tired of waiting for you to figure it out. See, I feel bad for the president. I really do. I do. See, he doesn't know anything about leading. He's never led anything in his life. Until we made him president of the United States, he never led anything in his life. Now, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful to any legislators who might be out here, but, you know, being in the legislature doesn't make you a leader. You don't have to make all those decisions. You vote on something in the subcommittee or the committee, and then he became a United States senator, and he barely showed up in Washington, D.C. to take the oath of office and started running for president of the United States. And he spent the next two years running for President of the United States. And he'd been a law professor, a community organizer, and a state legislator. He'd never run anything in his life. And so the President doesn't know how to lead. I mean, watch what he's been like for the past four years. He's like a man wandering around a dark room, hands up against the wall, clutching for the light switch of leadership. And he just can't find it, and he won't find it in the next 18 days. Blindly, blindly walking around the White House, looking for a clue. <laughs> looking for a clue. And, you know, the unfortunate thing for the president is this, is that there are clues everywhere. If he would just open his eyes and learn how to lead, there are clues everywhere. The American people want to be led. 23 million Americans who are out of work want a leader in the White House that will get the government out of the way and let businesses like ball office products and the millions of others like them grow and prosper and start putting people back to work.